Serious, parents who have adopted an older child, 5 and up, how has it gone for you? Do you regret it or would you recommend other parents considering adoption look into an older child? We adopted our eldest daughter at 10. We actually adopted her baby half-sister first. After the mom met us, since we were doing this via foster care, she asked if we'd adopt her other daughter too. She had been in and out of foster care most of her life. And her bio mom selflessly made the decision to let her go for stability and safety. We definitely weren't planning to adopt an older child. We already had a 6 year old biological child. But after meeting the 10 year old, we knew we'd want her to be a part of our family. It's been 16 years and it definitely hasn't always been easy. But we have no regrets. We love our daughter like our own. She was challenging to raise the first few years. Definitely had some trust issues with us and some deep-seated abandonment issues. Family therapy helped. Every once in a while. Like once every few years or so. These issues resurface. She still struggles with depression and anxiety. I'd be lying if I said this doesn't worry me. It does. But she seems to have a handle on it. She's always been incredibly smart and talented. She just finished her master's degree. Has had a successful career thus far. And she's engaged to a wonderful man. They were supposed to get married this summer. Now we aren't sure. Thanks Covid. It's almost odd that she has really excelled in everything she's ever tried. She thinks it's mostly due to good luck. We call her, half jokingly, our achiever. Some of her success was due to our parenting I'm sure. But most of it is just her and how she's wired. I'm proud to be her mom. Long story inbound. I'm going to cut it down as much as I can. My wife and I are a little older, so when we decided to adopt we opted for an older child for a host of reasons. One being it made more sense for us financially. Healthy infant adoptions are crazy expensive for average people like us. Plus the long waits, etc. And also because our hearts went out for older children whom society generally wants to look over and forget. These kids need a home too. We chose to adopt from the foster care system. This meant taking the same set of classes as standard aspiring foster parents. So even though we had no intention of becoming actual foster parents we learned what they learned and became legitimate foster parents. We took in a troubled 13 year old girl. I won't tell her personal story of how she got into the system. Except to say it was not as one might expect. We stuck through it with her. There were lots of twists and turns in her story and we found out the hard way that she was not, in fact, clear for adoption months into the process, so we became what we wanted to avoid. Foster parents instead of adoptive parents. I'll never forget during one of the regularly scheduled court appearances we were obligated to go to. Of having the court workers review her story to the court and later having random people sob in the back from listening to it. And tell us we will pray for you. She was angry at the world for her situation, angry at her bio mom for abandoning her, angry at the system for forgetting her for so many years. She lashed out at us many times as well, thinking we would just give up on her. I'll never forget her slamming the door to her room and screaming at my wife I hate you, over and over, and my wife barely holding it together and saying I love you anyway each time. My wife and I had moments of despair. When one of us would grow weak and say we couldn't do this anymore and maybe we should consider giving up. The other would remind us well what would we do in this situation if she were our child? And we would nod. And press on. One day, about a year and a half in, this child turned to me while I was driving her somewhere and said, I don't want to go back to my bio mom. I want you. I want you to be my dad and I, a grown ass man, broke down and wept. The adoption went final when she was 15. Yes, it was that long of a process, but the actual adoption took all of 5 minutes in a judge's chamber, for which this girl quipped, that's it, just the stroke of a pen? Hell I'd have lent you a pen years ago. People who didn't know us back then honestly are surprised to learn she was adopted. She's an honor graduate from high school now, and is planning to attend college in the fall for nursing. We couldn't be more proud of this child, our daughter. Edit. It seems I made a lot of people cry. I still get a lump in my throat and moist eyed every time I talk about the day she asked me to be her father, even now. 5 years on. I share this story every chance I get because it is my sincerest hope that maybe I'll move even one person or couple to consider adopting an older child. 
or maybe at least help in other ways such as donating clothes toys etc. These kids move from home to home so much that in many cases all they have is the clothes on their back and maybe a knickknack or two. Our child had a single suitcase's worth of loose ill-fitting clothes, some books, and a single photograph of herself as a baby that she kept in her sock everywhere she went in case she had to leave without her suitcase. I adopted a 15 year old. He was hell on wheels and made a lot of really poor choices. He's now 20, and I am so proud of the man he became. It was a horrible time trying to get him to understand that abuse isn't love and that we wanted the best for him. But he's doing great now and is working really hard to create a loving family of his own. Do I suggest adopting older kids? Hell yes. The biggest reason is because I grew up in foster care. All I wanted was my own family. It's hard. It's taxing. And you have a lot of rewiring to treat their hurts and make them better so they know you're not going to do the same to them but every minute is worth it. Teen years were rough. It's hard to be a kid again after having to parent yourself and younger siblings. But now that she is an adult, things are better and calmer for us all. I would 100% recommend it, even with the struggle. My child is a huge blessing and I can't imagine life without her in it. She is one of the strongest people I know. We adopted a 15 year old girl, after raising 3 bio kids to adulthood. It has been good but quite different from what we expected. 15 year olds are not fully formed but almost, she is a nice smart kid, but also got pregnant, hid it for 4 months, had a beautiful baby, he expected to finish high school and hold down a part time job, save some money which she would need to become independent after graduation. Her goal, she moved 1000 miles away, took up with kind of a rough crowd, was immersed in a druggy thiefy homeless group that made her fear that her son would end up removed and back in the foster care system. For now the baby is with us. Almost two babies are a lot of work but also a lot of joy and laughter. We are about 60. Occasionally I think this is not what we signed up for but in reality it is exactly what we signed up for. Most folks when they have a kid or multiple kids have a bunch of expectations. Part of what makes it interesting is that the kids come with their own personalities. Software. Journeys. Whatever you want to call it. Can make for a wild interesting 20 years. My story is a bit different. I was coaching a soccer team and had a kid in the foster program on the team. He was 13. Over the course of the season my wife and I really got to know him and saw how itty his foster parents were. At the end of the season we asked him if he wanted to come live with us instead. It's been 9 years since then. We had rough patches. But for us it was easy. We were still a young couple. 24 and 27. Then but his social worker arranged continued funding for us which eliminated any financial burden. It was an easy decision for us and I'd do it again in a heartbeat. We've had four of his other biological siblings live with us at one time or another as they've aged out of foster care. They all have their own unique problems. But all kids do. His 18 year old sister asked to come quarantine with us so we've got her staying here now. His brothers and sister are all just extra family and our biological little ones. 3 and 5. Call them all brother sister. He's 22 now and almost done with college and hopes to be a police officer. Sadly my wife and I will be moving out of state soon and we'll miss him like crazy. But no we've prepared him for life outside our home. We'll still be there for him of course. But we're excited to see him thrive independently. His girlfriend of 4 years is pushing him to move to our new state once they both finish school so they may still be back near us soon enough. I'm asking because I adopted my daughter when she was age 10. It was pure hell to begin with as it was not shared with us she had serious psychological issues. After 7 years of therapy and many many tears, we had a breakthrough. Now 27 years later, I was asked if I recommended doing it. I was at a loss if I should have been honest or just say yes because once you get past the issues that will surely arise. It's a wonderful thing to do. I took guardianship of my son's half sister when she was 14. Their father, who is not and will never be a part of my son's life, was abusive and tried to molest her once when he was drunk. As a result she was hyposexual and acted out. Her mother was a pushover who didn't know how to handle her so she was put into the system. I knew she wasn't a bad kid, so I stepped in and said I'd take her. 
It was rough that first year. She tested the boundaries a lot until she realized that I wasn't going to give up on her. I think it also helped that her baby brother adored her and my parents welcomed her with open arms. We found her a good therapist that she clicked with and that really helped her work through her issues. She finished school with good grades. Met her boyfriend who is wonderful with her. She has kids of her own now and is a fantastic mother. Best decision I ever made was taking her in. I fostered 7 and adopted 2. All girls. I got them between the ages of 12 to 15. I took that age because they were hard to place and I knew they were coming with loads of issues. My second to youngest had been part of a illegal material ring run by her parents. She was my biggest challenge and still is. She is the human embodiment of EIOR. She made it through college. Got her law degree. Passed the bar and self commits at least once a year. She's schizophrenic and still suicidal. One of my middle girls was severely beaten by alcoholic parents and she has a slight drinking problem and thinks nothing of swatting her kids. She knows if I see one mark on them or if them say anything I will take them. The others have mostly self esteem issues. They are all grown now. I do it all again. These are my kids and I love them. I also had one biological daughter and a stepson. The stepson is the only one I regret. It's definitely not for everyone. Edit. Oh wow. Thanks everyone for all the awards. I'm blown away. So many responses were so feelings. Thanks everyone for sharing. BTW. I have to share. My youngest found out at 6am she got a full ride for her post secondary degree at Lund University in Sweden. It's amazing what love can do. Throw away because this is personal. I've been a foster parent for 4 years. Have fostered birth to 15. About 20 kids total. And I've worked as an advocate for foster adoptive parents for two. I adopted my son last year after he had been with me for almost a year in foster care. He was five. So still pretty young. He is autistic and nonverbal. His mom has severe mental health issues and he had been homeless his whole life before coming into care. He was wandering the street in a diaper and nothing else in November when he was found by police. I've never regretted adopting him for a second. He's wonderful. He's ridiculously bright and funny and sweet. I love him more than I knew I could love anyone. We have many difficult days. Or weeks. I gave up a lot of things to be his dad. I'm only 27. It's hard to find a sitter for him. His daycare keeps him in the baby room. He can't always go out to the store or anywhere out crowded. ETC. But I adjusted and I don't regret it. From my work side. I can say I have encountered many adoptive parents who regret adopting. Usually these are folks who adopted little ones, like birth to two, and when those kids start exhibiting big behaviors, having trouble in school, needing psych hospitalization, getting involved with juvenile justice, that's when they call me and ask how to give them back. Sick. There are no givebacks unless you're willing to accept criminal charges. Edit. This is not true for all places. Some places have civil charges and some have nothing. I often see people say they want to foster teens. Which is amazing and I will never get in the way of that because it is so needed. I want those people to talk to people who foster teens before they do it. It's very hard. Not just hard like remodeling your bathroom or getting a work project done. There's no finish line. It's always a struggle. There are lots of good days and happy times and it is worth it. But people who talk about their kids going on to law school or even college. In my experience are the minority. Kids with trauma often need lifelong support. That means when they are 20, 25, you're still lending them money or driving them to rehab or dispensing medication. And if they have kids, they may not be able to parent appropriately without a lot of help. I know lots of adoptive parents now raising their grandkids as well. TL. DR. Fostering is very very hard and not for everyone. But it is worth it. P.S. I'm happy to answer questions anytime. Edit. I was thinking about this. Because it's 5am and my son is doing gymnastics in his room. And I wanted to clarify. People who call me to give their kids back aren't bad people. They're tired. Burned out. Hopeless. Scared. And desperate. Often there are other kids in the home who are being affected. You really don't meet a lot truly bad people who adopt from foster care. Nasaria. Edit 2. Okay. Ro, this got a lot of attention. I'll try to answer the questions but tbh it's a little overwhelming. 
so don't be offended if I don't answer you. Also, I'm not a lawyer. Just a regular dude who works in the system. If you want to look into fostering, Google your region plus foster care licensing. It's different in every county, state, and country. So if I don't know where you live I can't give you specifics. But good luck. My husband and I adopted my brother's two kids, at the time 2M and 6F, and their sister, 4F. Our oldest was violent and abusive. To herself and toward me, she never acted out that way around my husband. Which always made me feel as though I was doing something wrong. Maybe we weren't a good fit. Maybe I was too young. Maybe she was better off with her foster family. I would spend every night in tears. Fearful that we were doing more harm than good. Because she never acted out that way before adoption. She was reading by three. Eating up chapter books before we could introduce them properly. We thought she was memorizing street names. Nope. She read them faster than we could most times. She was, and still is, a brilliant young lady that shocks people when she speaks. But those fits. Dart it took our dog almost a year to really trust her. At one point she kicked me so hard in the mouth I thought I had lost teeth. Therapy and counseling helped more than I can even say, for both of us. Her therapist reminded me that she was hurt by her mother, and never knew her father enough to not trust him. She was throwing knives, metaphorically of course haha, because she had never really trusted women before. She was wary, and rightfully so. We both worked so hard to develop a healthy relationship, and honestly we're still putting hours into it. She's almost 10, and honestly just like me. It's odd. It's like we've always been a family, but it didn't always feel that way. Edit. Y'all. Dart I woke up to so many beautifully written comments. I can't even begin to thank everyone for their kind words less than 3 I just got done making my kids french toast, and made sure to love on them extra when they were done eating. They're my absolute world, and I'm so very glad for all of your support. I hope everyone has a fantastic day. Be safe and don't forget to remind your kids how much they mean to you less than 3. Also to clarify, their birth mom was almost completely deaf. She always had the TV on for the kids with subtitles. So our oldest was reading by a very young age. Our youngest had never been taken out of his car seat. So when he came to the sit to the back of his head was completely flat. He was non-verbal until he was about 3. And would get upset that we couldn't understand him. He and our middle daughter, from another bearded, were home together. So their bond was very strong. Even though she isn't biologically related to me. She's still their sister and we couldn't imagine separating them. All three are doing spectacularly well in school. And any delays we thought we would need to address before have completely disappeared. I couldn't be more proud of our little clan less than three. I feel I got lucky. He was nine when we adopted him. But he was just grateful to have a home and people who loved him. My wife and I love him dearly as he does us. Thank you for the silver. This is my first time getting one you Christian who's 649. Two silvers. Thank you you exactly accurate Joe. Three thanks to you high or not high enough. My pre-adoptive son just moved in 6 weeks ago. He's almost 10. Him getting here has been a bit of a long and wild story but he's been in care since he was 6. It hasn't been easy but there's so many older kids who need families. My biggest thing is just to make damn sure you're committed. Know your limits. Be honest with yourself and your adoption coordinator. And demand honesty from the social worker as well. Ask for psych evils and treatment histories. Because if you convince yourself oh I can handle this and you change your mind, you are a traumatizing that child. My son has complex trauma from years of abuse but the thing he talks about most after his meltdowns, having to leave his first pre-adoptive home because he kept losing his temper and throwing things. He's been in 4-5 placements and a PRTF since then. I work with girls involved in juvenile justice so I felt uniquely prepared for this situation and even for me. It's been physically and emotionally exhausting. I'm a single parent and we're in the middle of a global pandemic so I'm sure that's a factor. But if you choose to adopt there shouldn't be any changing your mind or this just isn't working out. That kiddo is part of your family. My son and I have a little mantra together forever. Even when things get hard. Even when things get sad. I became dad to a little girl just after her second birthday. Legally stepdad just before her fourth. And divorced her mother just after her seventh. 
but I remain dad and I do to this day, and she's 21 now. Her mother is a drunk, who had two more kids later on with an abusive guy, now ex who is in jail. The whole time my daughter had me to fall back on. I told her the truth at 15, as I know it, about her biological father who has never attempted to contact her. He has at least two, if not three other children. If she wanted to seek him out, I told her I would help her. Also that she needed to be aware at any time he, or those other siblings, could seek her out. He looked me in the eye and said no, you're my dad. That's all I want to know. Edit. Thank you for all the upvotes, and even my first reddit awards. I just want to add, due to, thanks to, her home family situation at her mother's. She's been eligible for government benefits and assistance through university. She will soon graduate as a paramedic. She never have got those benefits if she was living with me full time or if I had adopted her. Her bio father had child support extracted until she was 18. I didn't but she never went without her mother's ex. Although he was abusive to her mother, kept a roof over my daughter's head and food on the table before he got locked up. I never had personal issue with him. But once she's graduated and no longer eligible for benefits, she wants to do an intra-family adoption. I think that's what it's called, and she will adopt me as her dad legally. As a gay couple my partner and I adopted two siblings, age 9 and 10. Both girls. The reality is I love them both. I'm proud of them. They are light of my life. And I regret every decision that I made that resulted in me having them. Children who experience trauma and suffering at a young age can become productive well balanced adults. But it's long odds. My experience adopting is one of the greatest experiences I could describe to you. And if you want kids, I strongly recommend you look into it. My kids were siblings aged 7, 4, and 6 months. So it was never unknown to them. The bio parents abused them and things were a bit tough at first. But other than matters of faith, it is the most rewarding thing I've ever done. My oldest is a student at Purdue and is studying abroad in Ireland right now. My middle daughter will be attending Purdue in the fall. My youngest is learning Japanese in middle school right now. And I suspect she'll go to either IU or Purdue when she graduates high school. Proud dad. My husband and I unexpectedly adopted a 17 year old. She was on drugs and a downhill spiral. So we gave her a place full of love, therapy, help, therapy, rehab, and more therapy with love. She healed and became a part of our family. It is kind odd being only 9 and 10 years older than your kid but she is still our kid. Also we are a gay couple and knew basically next to nothing about females and their monthly needs. She never had a loving and stable household with men that didn't hurt her in emotionally and physical ways. So it was one big old learn process for the three of us. But we made it work and now we are like any other family. Adopted a child who was 11 when I was 21. He was my wife's younger cousin and his household was marred with substance abuse, filth, instability, and mental health issues. Knew it was bad but didn't know how bad. Took him, 11, and his brother, 14, for a summer once, just to give them a break from what we thought was a dirty house with an overwhelmed parent until I took them back the week before school started and saw the filth firsthand. The smell and the random people coming in and out. The wreckage we were about to have to leave them in. The fact that in this time his Xbox and games, I had hand me downed him, has been sold along with their TV. The two had one mattress on a floor and the younger one said I can't wait for school to start back and when I asked why, he said because then I get to eat every day. Like when I'm at your house. I told them to just get back in the car. His mother never even called to ask why he or his brother didn't come home until tax season. To make sure we didn't claim them on our taxes. ETC. Never wished him a happy birthday. Christmas. Nothing. My wife and I grew up very quickly. We worked hard and got full custody about a year later when he was 12. He grew up healthy and happy. Successful with great grades and a good head on his shoulders. His brother who was 14 lived with us for the first year then would go back and forth trying to help his mom get her life together before returning again. But for the most part during those years, 
The younger child we had full custody of and the older child came went as he needed. It wasn't until years later when the younger of the two moved out with his friends. Instead of taking our offer to go to college right after school and began having substance abuse issues of his own that we learned the extent of the abuse he had endured at home for nearly his entire childhood and kept inside. Sexual and physical for years starting when he was about 5 from his mother's friends and boyfriends and even a family member due to their terrible situation. It was heartbreaking. He ended up going through a pretty severe addiction period in his early to mid 20s and regardless what we've tried and how many small successes we've worked with him to reach. He always ends up in a severe depression and turning back to drugs again. The last time I talked to him, about a week ago, I told him I loved him and would help him get into a very nice rehab community when he's ready and help him get a good job and place for himself. But only when he's ready to be clean and until then. We simply can't do anything with for him, and it was hard to do. I am in the second half of my 30s now. I have three children in grad school who need me like he did then who also love him. Our oldest looks at him like a big brother, but unfortunately we have to keep our distance a bit so they don't have to see close up the ugly side of addiction in someone they love. Now that he is an adult in his mid-twenties himself making these choices, we can't have any real relationship other than the occasional call or letter until he is done. He loves them too. But he's got some demons that we cannot possibly understand and until he's ready to get help for them or help for his addiction. We don't have much of a relationship. His brother worked hard and straightened their mother out over the years into a functioning adult and mother. Got her life together. A job. A place. Everything and as adults. Never left her. In fact. Due to him. His brother spent the last year of his teens sharing our household and hers back forth which wouldn't have been possible without him. The older brother and her are roommates now and we are very proud of him for the man he's become. What he's persevered, and the incredible progress he's made with their mother and how he's stuck by her side now providing as equals. I never realized it, but he and I really grew up together. Only being 5-6 years apart in age and were best friends for years as young adults even after his younger brother moved out. One of my biggest regrets is somehow letting those days end. He loves his brother too. But isn't his mother's relationship with his brother is the same as ours. The delicate balance between helpful love versus enabling due to understanding the pain he's probably trying to understand repress. Until he's able to beat this. And he will. Nothing is perfect. Just what you make of it I suppose. But it has highlighted to us how important the early years of a child's development are and how damaging all forms of abuse can be. Regardless how much effort you put into trying to change things afterward. And also how important it is for a child to have an adult who genuinely cares about them. Since sadly many don't. Would I recommend it? Yes. But be honest with yourself why you're doing it and know what you're getting into. You're not getting a good bad kid. You're getting an opportunity to be a good bad parent. Children this age need you as much as a baby does. They bring happiness the same as a baby does and also present their own unique challenges the same as parents do. Which is what they're signing up for too without knowing. And most importantly the reason you should be adopting is for them. You get to give your love, time, affection and a portion of your life, and heart, too. Would I do it again every single time? Mine is now 16. I became dad when they were 5. They got drunk tonight on alcohol they snuck out of a locked room in the basement. Screamed at their mother and I for 2 hours. Ranted at their younger siblings. Then we called the police to take them to the hospital for their 10th inpatient psych admission and 4th one this year. Past 12 months. Less than a month after being released from the last one. They were such a happy kid. But the last 6 years have been hell. They swing from being a great, smart, funny kid with a bright future to rampaging throughout the house at the drop of a hat. There's definitely a mental health issue, but nothing works, and the swings are getting more and more frequent. I worry for them every single day. I love all of my kids. I also can't wait for this specific one to turn 18. When they have announced they are moving to Seattle to live with their boyfriend. Because we're just so tired and it doesn't matter how much therapy we pay for and undergo. Or how many times they go inpatient. If they'll be happier there. Then that's fine by me. Maybe getting out there and failing. God I hope they don't. Will make them take recovery and therapy seriously. I'm terrified I'm going to have to bury them. Though. It's 4am. I have to open my office in 4 hours. 
and I'm sitting on the couch waiting for my wife to get home from the hospital. Nothing's changing and we're all just so tired. My daughter is of a different race. So it was never something we could have hidden if we wanted to. We made a picture book that tells the whole story of her adoption. The trip to China and back. Etc. Before she could even speak. We made that part of what we told her. At least once a week we did that as a bedtime story. And continued for many years. It wasn't until age 11 that she really started having some serious questions about abandonment by her birth mom. ETC. But it wasn't a total shock because we had introduced a lot of it earlier. We fostered 26 since the 70s. We only took troubled boys and I have 3 biological boys. We have had fist fights you wouldn't believe and asses have been whooped on both sides but when they have a common task they get it done. I own a farm so there is always work. As the boys got older they realized it wasn't so bad and told the younger ones to behave. Now I have sons in military, law enforcement and academics and I would take a bullet for any of them. In fact we just got out final child she's 15 and wants to be a veterinarian. We keep her plenty busy. And besides wearing my bobby or jersey I think we'll keep her. My wife and I adopted an older girl from our state's foster system. The girl was 13 when we adopted her and we were told she had a rough childhood full of abuse and she had been diagnosed with general mood disorder. Little did we know that the psychological assessment was done by an unqualified state doctor and this little girl had severe issues that required more care than my wife and I were prepared for. We spent 5 years dealing with fighting, arguing, runaway attempts, drug use, alcohol abuse, constant emotional manipulation, constant lying, stealing, etc. She was also in constant contact with her schizophrenic birth mother behind our backs. The woman kept feeding our daughter conspiracy theories and lies and constantly making the situation worse for all of us. We tried the best we could for 5 whole years. Trying various different therapists. Trying different parenting methods. Seeing different doctors. All to no avail. It wasn't until about 5 months before her 18th birthday that we had to have her committed and we finally got a proper diagnosis. She was diagnosed with bipolar and BPD and we finally had an answer to the years of hell we all had to go through. We did our research and learned the proper way to parent a child with these conditions and things began to improve over the last few months she was with us. But on her 18th birthday she bailed and we haven't seen her since. That was 5 years ago. We adopted a 5 year old girl. She's now 12. Don't regret it at all. But it has been extremely hard. She has been diagnosed with PTSD, reactive attachment disorder and most recently bipolar disorder. She has been in therapy since we adopted her. Much has improved, but she still has extreme anger issues. She has run away from home three times. She has been in patient psych twice. Her school has reported us to DHR. When she gets out of control we have to restrain her to prevent her from hurting herself or us. She told her teacher about an incident when we had to restrain her so they reported it and a social worker showed up at our door that night. I wouldn't recommend adopting an older child to someone unless I know they are willing to put in the work. Love doesn't cure all.